what's up everybody and welcome to What's Up with Dr. A. Nathan Young. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so glad that all over the place you're telling me how this ministry is blessing you and how you're tuning in and how you can't wait to see it on Sunday mornings. We thank God that this ministry is blessing so many people all over this region and we thank God for the fruit that it's going to produce in your life. We're going to go into our 11 a.m. service at our Covington campus right now. Meet us right back here in 26 minutes. I can't wait to see you. I'm in a series entitled Living Through Life Storms. And today on this Father's Day, I'm going to preach about leading through the storms of life. And it's a message that's particularly directed toward men and fathers. Now, those of you who know me know that I'm pro-man. It doesn't mean that I'm anti-lady. I'm just pro-men because that's, that's where God is. Amen? And you'll see that more in this message. Men are in a storm. Men, would you stand, please? Every man in here, stand up. I want to say to you that I know and understand that you're in a hurricane in your life, an assault on your leadership, an assault on your authority. I want you to know that we live in a time where you're experiencing where men are the most misunderstood of any time in history. Where men are labeled, you being labeled. You live under a cloud of suspicion about all kinds of stuff. You're discriminated against at work and in the culture. You're disrespected by the media, disrespected in your communities, disrespected out in the world. And then the horrible thing is you come home where you're dishonored and disrespected. You're in a storm, made fun of on TV. Anything you see having to do with men on television, they make them look like buffoons or fools. There was a time that they didn't do that. Men are being attacked by women's groups, demonized in every way uh, that people can. There was a time when you were honored, especially in your own home, well, the natural bent of the culture was to respect men, but that day is over. You are under attack. You're in a storm. And I stopped by today with good news for you that will help you and the people that you love. Amen. And I want you to know that God loves you. God has a plan for your life. What's going on in the culture and in your home is not God's will, nor is it God's way. And I'm here today to applaud you. Give these men a hand. You may be seated. Amen. The Bible says this, Hebrews 2, 6 through 8, but one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? What's God saying? God saying, in spite of everything you're experiencing, men, I take notice of you. I'm mindful of you. I pay attention to you. You can look to me. Don't look to the culture. Look to me. Or the son of man that you take care of him. You have made him a little lower than the angels. Hallelujah. What's God saying? You may not be special fathers in your own home but you're special to me. I made you a little lower than the angels. That's what God did with men. I made you special. And then he says this, you have crowned him with glory. God said, I made you special. Then I crowned you with glory and honor. You're a man with glory. You're a father with honor. God says, if nobody else gives it to you, I do. Amen. Crown with glory. What's he saying? I made you to make me look good. That's where you get your glory. You don't get your glory, men, from your wallet, from the car you drive, 
from your race, from your color, from your neighborhood, from your pedigree or family background or politics. God say, I made you. I made you special. You were the crown of my creation. You were my greatest achievement. And I want you to know you're special, you're unique, and that I am in love with you. I crowned you with glory and honor. Honor, what's that? Approval. Status. God says, I'm giving you status, man. You have my approval. Then he says this, and set him over the works of your hands. What's God saying? I put men in charge. Folk don't like that today, but it's Bible. It's right. It's what God said. He says, and set him over the works of your hand. What you saying, God? I made all of this. And because I made it, I got to decide who would run it and who's in charge, and I appointed men. 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 You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. What is God saying? You're in charge. You're the king of the jungle. You're the king of the world. God is saying, don't let nobody tell you that you're not. Hold your head up. Stick your chest out. And act like the person of glory and honor that I designed, created, and gave you authority to be. Amen. I'm short, but I walk like I'm the king of the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> My daddy told us, y'all, man, say God made man. The king of the jungle, boys. You the king of the world. And don't let nobody take that from you. I had some old cars on my property. And uh, my dad decided to bury them. So he took my sons, his grandkids, my pastor Nate and Jamie with him. And they were going to, and they opened the door to one of the old cars. And it was full of yellow jackets. And they said, Papa. This car, we can't do nothing with this car. It's full of yellow jackets. My dad would say, man is a king of the world. Not no doggone yellow jacket. <laughs> Y'all the king of the jungle. Jumped down off that machine, snatched that door open. Amen. Put his cap off, and them yellow jackets tore him up. <laughs> <laughs> My boys say they were popping them, and he was popping them. Man is a king of the jungle. With that hat. <laughs> men, men, fathers, listen to me. You've been crowned with glory. God's given you honor. God's put you in charge. You the man, you the boss, you the authority, you are it. And don't let Anybody, the media, women's groups, politics, folks' feelings, nobody take that from you. I ain't scared. My son Jamie visited my father's grave a couple of weeks back. He said he walked up to it. It's been there about three years. It's overgrown with weeds and grass and stuff. He said, and he thought to himself, if I had a weed eater or something, I would clean this grave off. He said, he heard my daddy's voice from the grave. Man is the king of the jungle. Not grass and weeds and sticks. Man. He said he got down on his hands and knees and cleaned that grave off crystal clean. Why? He knows who he is. Men, do you know who you are? You have honor and glory. And God's put you in charge. Now watch this. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. God said, I put everything under him, but not all things are under him yet. You know what really inflames me and upsets me today? Is that God put men in charge, put men with honor and courage and glory and authority, but not all things are submitting to it. What things are not submitting to it now? Family. Man's own people that he loved, 
provides for, protects. They refuse to honor him, give him glory, and submit to his authority. His wife, his children, his loved ones refuse, have bought all this worldly garbage. There was a time when a man was at least respected and honored in his own home. Not anymore. The Bible says this. So I sought for a man among them who would make up a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. What's God saying? God saying the wall is down. The protection for kids, for marriage, for family, for money, the values of roles, the things that made life simple. It wasn't easy, but it was simple because there was a wall up. It's down. He said, now there's a gap. Something's missing. God said, I get up every day, and what am I looking for? To fill the gap and hold up the wall. A man. A man. He said, men are the solutions to the problems. Fathers are the advocates for relationships, for family, for emotions. God said, I want to use a man. And the world tells everybody you can use everything but a man. God said, uh-uh, no, no, it's men. I'm looking at some folk, you mad with your father and he's dead. You mad with your father, amen, about what other folks said he should have done for you. God said, look, you want to fix your home, fix your life, fix your culture, fix the world? He said, the person I'm going to use is a man. Not perfect, but powerful. Why? Because they have me. So that's who I will use. I'm not using Oprah. I'm not using Ayana. I'm not using Me Too. I ain't, I'm not using any of that. So if you want a real fix, I'm using men. Now watch this. This is what hurts me. But I found no one. I couldn't find anybody. Why? Because the men have been feminized. The men have been neutered. The men, their leadership has been undermined. They are underappreciated and underserved and compromised. I couldn't find one. I'm looking for a man, but I found no one. I had a pipe burst in my garden, water running like crazy everywhere. I got, I don't know how many valves on my water tank. I went to the water tank, turned off every valve, and the water kept running, flooding everything. Tried to find a cutoff to fix it, but I found none. Finally had to go to the switch and turn the whole switch off, everything. In your family, in this culture, with your kids and your marriage, the time is going to come unless some things change where God going to flip the switch and shut it all down. He said, because I, I, I want a man, but y'all keep undermining him. Y'all keep refusing to submit to him. You keep trying to make authority equal. I found none. Listen, O Israel, he's talking to men. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to the commands that I'm giving you today. What's it mean to commit for men to commit themselves wholeheartedly to the Lord? Worship. You're not going to get the Bible right. You're not going to always be following Jesus. That's a goal. But the one thing you can do wholeheartedly is go to church. Worship the Lord. Statistics say when kids come to Christ first, amen, 4% uh, of families go to church, 
get blessed, lives change. 4% when kids come first. When women come to church and to Christ, 18% of families change, get involved in the church, get turned around. When men come to, to the Lord first and church, 92% of families get saved. Give God a hand. Amen. So, men, what can you do? You can do one thing. Wholeheartedly commit to worship. Worship. The Bible says this. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wire them on the, your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gate. What's God saying? I'm looking for a biblical, Bible teaching, Bible leading, Bible quoting man. And that will fix everything. Everything. And men, I'm not beating you up, Father. Because I know this. You cannot teach what you do not know. You got to know it. And so how do I get that? You must take the opportunity to learn the word of God. Not wait for it. Take it. Take the opportunity to lead. Take the opportunity to teach in a life group even when you don't know. Take the opportunity I shared with them a guy who came in under our drug program named Knock Knock. Knock Knock took opportunity. He said when he, he had just gotten out of prison, when he was at Angola, they walked him out in the field and told him, gave him a hoe, and told him to work to guard that field. He said, he told him, I'm from Covington. I don't know anything about no garden, no farming, and I don't work out in the sun. I don't do that. He said that guard whispered something in the radio. In five minutes, there were jeeps and guards on horses from everywhere. He said he just pointed at him. They got off them horses, came and beat him down. Busted him open real good, drug him to the hot box, threw him in there and threw salt in there on him. Let him stay in there for two days. He said when they opened that door, he ran out to the field, drop kick another guy with a hoe and start hoeing. <laughs> he took the opportunity. Take the opportunity to lead. Take the opportunity to teach. Take the opportunity to get in a life group. Take it. Take the opportunity to do Bible study. And then take the opportunity to move God's hand in one of the greatest areas of your life. Take the opportunity, men, to give to your pastor in a love offering. And some of y'all, even the idea of giving another man money, you don't like it. But you give hoes money. You give clothes money. You give cars money. You spend money on sports. So the next time you get sick, call your hoe. That's where your money went. Hey, Amen. Next time you got a problem in your family. And by the way, I see some of y'all look, that's a Bible word. I can use any word that's in the Bible. Amen. Amen. When you got family troubles, call Kamara. Call Drew Brees. Call it sports folk. Call your clothes folk. Now watch this. In my life, I take the opportunity to bless, give money to, serve, take care of preachers and my pastor. It's been one of the greatest blessings in my life. And I see it in the lives of other men. Thad Baham takes care of preachers. Thad Baham gives money and everything to his pastor. He's a blessed man. Number one, he blessed because he got Yvonne. God gave me Yvonne. Give God a hand. Amen. The other thing is God has honored that in his life. We were playing golf. He was going for a checkup. He started out to go. I talked him into going. He went from the, for the, from the checkup to going under uh, heart surgery. God did that. That's bigger than money. 
Amen. Got his chicka going. He are old as Methuselah and in good shape. That's the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Got those kids and grandkids who, who like him full of demons, but God, they got them from him. His DNA, hallelujah. But guess what? God gives him wisdom to help them navigate through their problems and gives him an divine wisdom and balance and prayer and status to know when to say yes, when to say no, amen, when to walk away and what to do. That's the blessing of the Lord. <laughs> Take the opportunity. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Fathers, let me bless you. Stop making your main emphasis your kids' education. We got enough educated fools. Stop making your main emphasis making sure they get a good job. I'm working with tons of people with, who are educated with good jobs and crazy. <laughs> Don't know up from down, nervous on pills, all kind of junk. Amen. Amen. Another thing is common sense ain't common no more. No. <laughs> Amen. Your kids need wisdom. That's what they need. Wisdom. Stand in the gap. What good is a child who's a billionaire with a PhD from every college in the world and then dies and go to hell? Your first job is the spiritual in your life and in theirs. And God said, if you seek him first, he'll take care of the rest. God said, stand in the gap. Make up the hedge. What's missing in the gap with fathers? Discipline. Too many fathers trying to be their kid's friend. You their father. You their dad. And then, amen, I just want to go Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. When a man tell me my wife won't let me discipline my children. Man up! Hey man, if you're trying to discipline your kids and she get in the way, and I ain't scared, discipline her too. <laughs> hey man, I ain't scared. Discipline her too. Hallelujah. Watch this. Men go... But I get cut off. Get cut off for something important like the discipline of your children. Because, by the way, in most marriages, ain't much going on anyway. Hallelujah. <laughs> Watch this. Watch the Bible. Discipline your children while there's hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. Why would you let anybody, including yourself or their mother, help you? Ruin their lives because you won't discipline them. The Bible says it ruins their lives. To discipline a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. We see that everywhere. Now the police got to beat them down. Discipline your children, talking to fathers, and they will give you peace of mind and will make your heart glad. I have a badge of honor for Maria and my kids. When they were growing up, you know what that title was for me? I loved it. Her and the kids. My title was monster. I was the monster. Hey, man. But now I'm the hero. I'm the good father. I have peace of mind. And because of my discipline, my boys grew up in the hood. Thank you, Lord. And never went to prison. Amen. Grew up in the hood, amen, and work and take care of themselves. Grew up in the hood and all my kids say, yes, sir, no, ma'am, understand and submit to authority. Why? Discipline. Make my heart glad. The Bible says, why submit to your husband? As those fitting who belong to the Lord. Watch this. As those who belong to what? The Lord. God say this blessing that I'm about to talk about. It's not for all ladies. It's some of you. It's not for you. Say, this is for people who are fitting for the Lord, 
who want to do what the Lord says. Some ladies want to do what Oprah says, want to do what their mama said, their friends say, what they say. No, this for women who want to do for the Lord. So if you don't like this, I ain't talking to you anyway, and neither is God. He told you who he's talking to. As women fitting for those who belong to who? Some ladies belong to Satan. How you know? Because they talk to them to the men. Amen. They have a rebellious, smart mouth. They flip, disrespectful, and working in on being independent. How the hell are you gonna be independent? Married. How are you going to be independent in a relationship and you're looking for a partner? What do men need? Advocates. Fathers, this is my gift to you today. Hopefully, amen, the people in your life will become advocates. What is an advocate? Somebody who stand up for you, defend you, exalt you, support you. It's a shame. It's a low-down crying shame and a sin. It's horrible that men get beat up in the street, beat up in the world, beat up on the, in the media, dishonored everywhere, and then they come home and get the same thing. Because women training the kids, yeah, he mean, yeah, he don't do this and he don't do that, and he doesn't do the other. No. No. And then when they really need some authority in the kids' lives, they can't go to the man because they've been all critical. They turned him into a person of no value with the kids. The women of my generation, the men were horrible. They were horrible. But they didn't put down their husbands. They didn't disrespect them with their kids. They honored them. They would tell him the same thing that Marie told my kids. Yeah, amen, he got problems, but he's your dad, and that's my man. So get back on your side of the street. What do women do today? Insult, demean, criticize, disrespect, and then teach the children to do it. What are advocates for men? Don't you think a man ought to have an advocate? At least in the person he's sleeping with. At least in his own home. He ought to have somewhere where folk are saying, good job. You messed up. You're not perfect. You screwed up. You got all of that. But I'm here for you, brother. That's what they need. Give God a hand. <laughs> not what the world's telling folk. As I close. What's the cure-all? Forgiveness. Don't give him on this Father's Day lunch, barbecue, or steak. Give him forgiveness. And then be an advocate for fathers and for men. 